the last lecture uh, what we have done the last lecture we discussed we introduced the topic transducers and we discussed then what are their properties and background noise are like so you can turn off the audio sensors then activators so this is what actually we what is the difference between sensors transducers and in what sense we can use them as the same that means when we can say that what are the differences what are the what are the similarities between transducers and sensors so it was the basic principle of working the physical principles a working principle is same for both sensors and transducers So this is same for both and we so there is not much difference so they are the formers of transducers both and in this sense we will start from i have told you that there may be different types of transducers which are classified or characterized on the basis of their physical principle involved like you have electric sensors electrical sensors or transducers magnetic then we have optical, we can have thermal, that is temperature based, magnetic gravitational as well are there, which are not in this course, this scope, scope of this course. And in order to move forward, we will start from different types and we will go one by one, whatever are mentioned in your syllabus. And we will start from the temperature based transistors, temperature based sensors. Transducers are sensors. So temperature based, they are there are different types of temperature based transducers. Like the simplest one is that is called bimetallic strip. Then there are advanced ones like thermocouples there. Thermocouple, there is a thermistor. These are the basic ones which can be used as these temperature based sensors or the temperature based transducers. Then there are also as metal resistor. Sensors, these actually fall in this category thermistors and the basic principle is same for all these that's why they are in the same category actually the basic principle is same that means we measure actually we vary the temperature within a material and take the output so we give it a energy in the form of a heat and we take the output in another form like in electrical or mostly in the electrical in case of bimetallic sensors uh, or in any temperature sensor in any temperature sensor uh, the basic thing is actually the physical quantity the physical quantity which is involved is heat actually in all these systems what we measure actually is heat but since we cannot measure heat directly from the system so what we do we do we measure actually we measure the change in the temperature due to j 
change in heat content of a material. This is the basic principle actually of working of any temperature based sensor or thermal based sensor. And what we obtain actually, we obtain the convert the principle. What is the principle is that the principle is that we there is a conversion of energy from thermal to electrical mostly and vice versa there can be sometimes electrical to thermal and that we will see in the later part we also use we make use of thermal effects of current thermal effects of current which is also called a joule heating actually the important point about these trans transducers is that thermal uh, temperature based transducers is that these transducers are not directly used they are not direct ones they are not direct direct means that we cannot give directly a temperature and they can give directly you the current but what they do actually is uh, mostly in this uh, temperature based sensors they operate or function uh, due to the temperature difference by not being direct means that they work by taking the difference of the temperature so you have a temperature you start from one point you go up to one point then there's a difference in the temperature this difference in the temperature will vary in some quantity delta t can give you the difference in something like it has a for example resistance it has a r1 it can go up to r2 so it can give you delta r so they operate on the difference of the temperatures actually and they take a heat actually the basic principle is that they take heat at higher t that means if we give it temperature they take the heat at the higher temperature and discharge that heat discharge that heat at some lower temperature if you feel any confusion in any sentence or you don't understand please let me know via message you can send me a message through the chat option the chat option is there in the menu of this application so that means they take you give some temperature at higher end they take it and do discharge it towards some lower end so it goes to that side where the temperature is lower in the body that is what it means so this is basic principle that how they work what they use actually what we need to do we are dealing with these temperature sensors the bimetallic strip the simplest one is that bimetallic strip so bimetallic strip means that we have two metals and it forms a strip it's the simplest one you take two metals but those two metals they have some different actually what is different with them they have different expansion coefficients the physical quantity which is involved here in this case is expansion coefficient how we define expansion coefficient we define the expansion coefficient as We define the expansion coefficient. It is fractional change in length divided by original length, or it is defined as fractional change in length per unit length. This is generally defined as it can be taken as fractional change in length 
per unit length per unit length for example if we have your one metal simple sorry if we have a one metal strip this we heat it we give it some temperature at one end it tries to expand so if it is and length is l and it moves to l dash thermal expansion simply the thermal expansion it moves l dash then the change is l dash minus l which is delta l divided by the original length divided by the original length and it is always positive for a metal important point is that the thermal expansion coefficient for a metal is always positive what does that mean it means that metals when they are heated they always expand their inner length or dimensions or physical dimensions always change increase as compared to the original ones that is how it will be positive otherwise if l dash is smaller than l it will be negative so that means when the dimensions shrink but it is not possible it is not happening with the metals because when you heat metals it will expand so it is always positive for them so it is possible for us that we can use these metallic strips for the use of the uh, sensing of a temperature in a material and we can draw the simplest diagram i have sent you these notes actually already this one so they have different it is called as also called as a linear expansion expansivity linear expansivity that means they expand in one direction in particular one direction so the different linear expansivity so what we do with different linear expansivity uh, before that i will give you some uh, idea about how much is this for example for aluminium metal the linear expansivity coefficient if it is alpha for example if it is alpha so this f for aluminium it is 2.4 similarly for mg it is 2.6 for silver it is 1.9 so there are two different metals having different linear expansion coefficient they can be used for measurement of the temperature or they can be used as sensors they sense the temperature and you can use them in any circuit for example in they are actually uh wait they can be used in like switch and the most uh, usable physical form is discs actually so discs and they can be used for switch for uh, overheating elements overheating like while there's a overheating you can measure the, you can save those systems from the overheating like it geyser which we use in our system in our household uh, households so and when they are in the disc shaped for example if you have another disc here and these two metals have different this linear expansion coefficient and you apply some there's a temperature variation so what will it do what will happen actually they will expand up to some particular dimension when they expand they can move here from if they are joined together they can move here from away from a part from one another they can move away from one another and you can also take you can also use them for protection that is overheat protection overheating here we can use them protection purpose Yes, these are 
these bimetallic strips they are bolted actually they are bolted to heat sinks heat sinks means that those who absorb heat actually like small motors so they act as a safety devices these uh, bimetallic strips that means you give them the heat energy and there is it it converts into that thermal expansion actually or transformers so they can uh, they can be also used in different transformers that means whenever there is overheating they got disconnected because they are they are expanding and they move away from one another and it is a linear expansion that means they can expand in one direction only this is one of the by and i have sent you the that image it's image, that uh, figure in the notes i hope you might have it with you at this time so that you will be able to understand actually the another one is thermocouples thermocouple is actually simply it detects temperature it directly detects the temperature so bimetallic strip is actually a device which converts that heat energy into some mechanical energy actually it converts that heat energy into that thermal expansion it is used in thermal expansion and we take the advantage of that thermal expansion but in thermocouple if you see the name thermo means that it is a heat but it is a couple that means there are two different materials and that means are uh, two different materials you can have two different actually junctions or uh, junctions so there is a two different in thermocouples what we use we use a metallic material or a wire for example like this there are two junctions there are one junction is here one is here what this wire has this is conus ten tem that is copper plus iron sorry copper plus nickel it's a alloy constant tem and this is copper sorry why we use these two different types of these uh, materials here uh, i will tell you later but before that the thermocouple actually it works on the principle of simply seebeck effect what is a seebeck effect seebeck effect is that if you have any conducting material if you have any conductor whose two ends are at different temperature you are your the two ends of a material are at different temperature are simply a conductor then there is a there is an emf developed across the material across the junction that is actually because of that is called as contact potential that is what happens we keep one junction here at high temperature or it is hot simply i can write it as it is hot junction this one is at cold and what happens there is a developing emf across this these two junctions that is you can measure here that emf and in that way you can take the temperature actually difference of the material so you should remember that it works on the difference of a temperature and i will give the simplest example of this if you have seen the research lab of your department there is that high temperature furnace which is kept on that shelf actually 
at that high temperature furnace, so they use these thermocouplers to measure the temperature, to measure the difference of the temperature. What is done actually, they need a reference point. The reference point means that you have one probe of that thermocouple or one connection which is to the which is connected to the outside temperature or room temperature and another one is connected at hot temperature with a furnace or oven so one is at this temperature one is own temperature and that this oven temperature we can change this to complete the circuit actually between because at room temperature one wire we need two different wires these here same for two different wires for this junction which is at high temperature and in that way they measure actually mm -hmm. the difference the difference between those two what is the outside what is the inside the difference is measured in terms of the voltage and that voltage when you volt develop that voltage when that voltage is this voltage is converted to temperature by different mechanism than different circuits electronic circuits so it is converted to temperature actually at that time for example in case of I will give you some examples. For example, in copper, in case of copper, the at T equal to delta T, actually it is delta T because we are dealing with the temperature differences. So delta T is 100 degree centigrade. That EMF, which is developed at this volt, is this temperature is 4.28 millivolt. 4.28 millivolt. Now the point is that if it is a millivolt, how will we be able to measure the small change? So what is done actually, and most of these thermocouple, which are used in different devices for measuring the temperature differences, uh, in amplification, amplified circuit is used. Amplifier circuit is used. That amplifier circuit, what it does, it actually amplifies that output voltage before you can read it. So it is amplified actually inside that and it's calibrated all over that circuit by proper electronic circuiting and it is amplified actually this signal. And similarly, at delta T equal to 400 degrees centigrade, it's the EMF which is generated at this difference of temperature, sorry. The EMF is equal to 20.87 millivolt. So an amplifier circuit is used in these cases where the signal voltage is very low so that we cannot be able to measure it. And the important point is that these can be used applications. So these can be used for measuring very high temperatures for our high temperature, not very high, but high temperatures. They can measure from uh, not exactly zero degree centigrade. That means yeah, room temperature, yeah, not zero degree centigrade. They can go from like uh, this 25 degree centigrade or 30 degree centigrade because at the room temperature, they need some particular low limit of temperature. That is a room temperature. So they can go from 30 degree centigrade to 1400 degree centigrade. So thermocouples can measure this much of high temperature. And another point is that they have not very high precision, do not possess very high position, precision. They do not have very high precision. Precision means that they can measure, they can give you the temperature of in if it is 1400 degrees centigrade, there can be an error of plus minus five degrees at even the 10 degree temperatures. Mm. Plus minus 10 degrees centigrade. They are not actually very highly precise. And that is how we use this thermo thermocouples actually. There are different other methods like Peltier effect is also, which is a reverse of it. They are used, but more or less. They are not used more oftenly. The more oftenly used is that is Seebeck effect actually. So biometallic strip, that is a device which works on its expansion coefficient. The thermocouple is that which works on the temperature difference by taking the U by making uh, taking advantage of the Seebeck effect. Thermal 
due to the thermal differences, temperature differences at two different ends, you can change, detect the change in voltage across that material. And Seebeck effect you might have studied in your higher secondary classes. And I will now move to the third one, which is simply actually called as thermistors. So we can, thermistors. The name itself suggests actually thermistors, which means thermal resistors. A lot of examples you know actually. You have de been you dealt with these examples in your MSc lab. I will give you one example is four probe method. Okay, you have done the transistor parameters in the MSc lab. Nita I naught. This is all you have calculated from there and one of them one another one is dilated constant so i hope that you might have got an idea that what these thermistors are actually that means we increase the temperature there's a change in resistance change in resistance and that change in resistance is calculated converted to voltage then converted to temperature then you measure the temperature so you increase our you increase the temperature this is one you also actually this is not directly we increase the temperature we increase the temperature by varying current actually sorry by varying current and what it does actually there's a change in resistance and you their change in creations is cal cal converted then to the change in temperature so what is the temperature by joule thomson heating actually heating effects of the current so you generally vary the current in the dielectric constant that coil which is mounted to the o1 o1 so you have that o1 so you have that wire around that and you vary the current here this current actually changes the resistance of this Wait, huh? <laughs> so you change the current in the this wire, which is generally a metallic, or it can be a alloy. What is alloy? Alloy is a mixture of a combination of two different metals, two different materials, two different materials. And this alloy is used for that uh, thermal element, actually heating element. And this, when we change the current in the output, you vary that knob, you are varying actually the current, which is going across this coil. And this changes the heating effects of that. That current is changed into the heat, and that is when you measure the temperature actually. And these are called as thermistors. And these thermistors, if you see there, if this is the temperature here, this is the R or the resistance or the resistivity, you see that it drops like this as you increase the temperature. As you increase the temperature, that resistance decreases. Distance decreases. The graph will be like this. These, this is another and one more is which is falling in this category of the thermistors that is metal resistance sensors. The metal resistance sensors in this case there's a change in the resistance of the metal and that R is equal to you all know that this rho is the resistivity this s is the length as the angle and this rho is resistivity and a is a cross sectional area 
So A is the cross section of the area. And if theta is the temperature, which we measure actually, which is which we measure at any point of the time by changing this uh, current or the resistance of the material, then we can say that the length change or uh, the change in length is equal to S into alpha into theta. That means how the length will be changed will be that will be SL. This alpha is actually called, this is the linear expansivity, linear, which I, we have already discussed above in case of this bimetallic strip, or it is expansion coefficient. Similarly, the area increase, this is length change, and the similar the area if increase, this case will be, it is equal to actually twice A, that means what will be the area that will be increased. This A is the area at this A. This is area at zero degree centigrade. Zero degree centigrade means that it is the original area. We are not, we cannot measure directly the zero degree centigrade. So this is its initial area. What was the initial area? that is multiplied by the thermal expansion coefficient. This is not proportional, don't confuse it with proportional. It is expansion coefficient, this alpha here. And theta is the change in that temperature. It will give the change in that area. And the rho will go to rho alpha theta. In these case of, in this case of metal resistance sensors. So this is resistivity, how resistivity changes in these cases. We use different materials, the materials which can be used. Materials used, they are generally platinum and uh, platinum resistance. Thermometers is one of that platinum. This is one of the devices which works on the principle of this metal resistance sensors. That means you change that temperature the you change the resistance the temperature will change in this material and one of them is the platinum which is used uh, in case of metal resistance uh, platinum resistance thermometers and these are actually small sensors which are used for measuring very low temperatures for very low temperature even you can measure uh, with this one degree Kelvin, one degree Kelvin, it has a very low, very high precision. That means you can measure very low values with these, uh, this platinum based resistance thermometers. And this platinum actually, it has a, it is an international reference standard. That means it's thermal expansion coefficient is international reference standard, which is a reference standard. And all the uh, expansions in different materials is me are measured with respect to this platinum. They are measured with respect to this platinum actually. That's why it has been kept as international reference standards. Uh, one example you can use copper and constantum. This is another one. We can use platinum and rhodium. This is for lower T. This is for high temperatures. And I already told if there's a small, this change in the voltage, it is amplified actually because by using the amplified circuits. This is all I think I will tell you today for in this case. And there are much more examples in this temperature sensor. These are more, these are few which are important actually, which are the important ones in the, in the category of temperature based sensors. And if you have any questions, one question was from 
I think Yunus, he was saying that is there any mathematical relation between thermoelectric EMF and temperature? It is simply if you see the Seebeck effect, I will advise you to see go through the Seebeck effect and Seebeck effect will give you the details between the EMF developed because of the temperature change. Because there's the simplest one. So we have one or two minutes. You can, if you have any questions, please let me know. In the case of this uh, thermocouple, uh, thermocouples, yeah, see back effect. So these are the thermocouples. So if I go here, if you use this iron copper nickel it, it is it can be measured zero to 800 uh, degrees centigrade and the change in the voltage is 5 to 26.5 millivolt this is the change in this case this is actually the, that iron constant and this constant and alloy this is an alloy so alloy is a mixture actually of two different metals. You have another one is that platinum, rhodium platinum. So it can be measured zero to 1400 degrees centigrade and the change is 0 0.645 millivolt. It is per 100 degrees centigrade, per 100 degrees centigrade, this change. So per 100 degrees centigrade, there's a change of 0.645 millivolts. And the advantage with these are that they are very small. They can be coupled with any of the devices and they take very less spaces.